I call on the first debater pro, and I think that is a Mr. Matt Brandon. Matt, please. Good evening. I will be debating uh, in favor of the resolution, which is the law should be reason free from passion. And that's what I'm agreeing with. Pro <laughs> for it. Long before his marriage to Jackie O, Aristotle first distinguished the rule of law from the rule of men. He said, he who bids the law rule, that's what Aristotle said, may be deemed to bid God and reason alone rule, but he who bids man rule as an element of the beast, for passion perverts the minds of rulers, even when they are the best of men. That's literature. <laughs> so for Aristotle, law in its highest form is reason free from passion. Now I'm no student of the ancient Greeks, but my learned friends here, Mike and DJ, have helpfully informed me that, that Aristotle was the most feared and powerful of all the Greek gods. So if he said there shouldn't be passion in the law, brother, no passion should there be, believe you me. I think, I think was he the one married to a swan? Yeah. Yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. Let's take an example. Love is an area where most people have some experience, and it illustrates the point well, and yesterday was Valentine's Day, so this is kind of apropos. As an example of passion without reason, it's when you, when you feel love towards someone who you know or strongly suspect is wrong for you. In this case, reason and passion are battling each other, and often people try to ignore their reasoning in order to try and make a relationship work especially if that relationship is based only in passion. It can't be done, though. I'm going to tell you right now. My wife and I took a solemn and reasoned vow when we got married. And our provincial legislatures have reasonably enacted a marriage act, and it contains not a shred of passion in it. And I'm sure the other married people in this room today will agree with me that the passion that there might have been at the beginning of a relationship, it gradually diminishes, but it gets replaced by something even stronger. Reason. <laughs> Routine, predictable, perfunctory, reason. A lot of people, <laughs> A lot of people, my wife is right here. <laughs> oh, hit me, Wally! <laughs> a lot of people get legally married because they view this as the reasonable, re reasonable precursor to having children. And I, for one, have always wanted to have children. You know, even when I was a younger man, when I was single, I always used to wonder, well, what kind of parent would I be? And I used to think, Probably the father. <laughs> and it's true. It worked out that way because, because today I am the proud father of two beautiful children. A couple other kids not so attractive, frankly. <laughs> but you know what? You play the cards you're dealt, you know? Two out of four, pretty good, right? Give me Wally! Come on! There's nothing in the world that prepares you for that first child. And the feelings of love you have for that first kid. When your first child is born, you're passionate about being a dad. And then when your wife tells you that she's expecting another baby, your initial reaction is an unreasonable one. <laughs> because you worry, that because you have so much love for that first kid, you worry that you'll never be able to love that second one as much. And I promise you that that is an unreasonable concern, because, because when that second one comes along, 
let me assure you, the difference is, is negligible. I mean, you almost love it as much. I mean, it's almost, and it's, it's practically a tie, really. So, don't worry about that. Oh, okay, go ahead. Oh. But my passion-loving friends here, and here, they've been split up somehow. I don't know why that is. Safety. They want laws to be dictated solely by passion, free from the legitimacy that is derived from reason. I guess the point I'm trying to make is that children without reasonable and legitimate laws and only passion, well, there's a name for those kind of kids created out of passion. Bastards. <laughs> I'm not cursing. That is a legitimate legal definition, ladies and gentlemen. That's not, illeg that's not illegitimate. That is a legal... Look it up in blacks if you don't believe it. That's in there, people. But this resolution does not only apply to family law. Every aspect of our legal system connotes reason before passion. Right down to how you dress before you appear in court. These robes I'm wearing, and they are wearing, they are, uh, they're owned by the law school, and I have to say they're dry clean only, which means they're dirty. <laughs> Everyone, I should explain for the judges, everyone, everyone wears these for their first year moots in law school. And uh, I, for one, am proud to be contributing to the accumulation of over 60 years of uh, first year flop sweat <laughs> from moots. <laughs> Yakabuchi. Class of 62. Proud part of our heritage. <laughs> Now you may be asking, Matt, is it reasonable to think something as inconsequential as how lawyers dress affects our legal system? To which I say, maybe I do, and maybe I do. Of course, of course it does. In court we wear reasonable attire. Not a tuxedo with like gold epaulets and a sash, or that's unreasonable, but a business suit covered by Judicial robes. It says, I am reason unaffected by passion. My learned friends here do not want to have to dress so reasonably. Even over here at the BC Law Courts. No, no. They'd rather dress for passion. That's right. If these passion fashionistas had their way, they'd be arguing in front of your lordships wearing nothing more than a dog collar some canola oil, and a pair of buttless chaps. <laughs> Disgusting. Shame on you. Picture it! And so, ladies and gentlemen, when my worthy opponents step up here to this podium, this bastion of law and reason, I implore you to mentally picture them standing in front of you, all decked out in their whips and leathers of passion. And I want you to ask yourselves, do we want to adjudicate our laws based on the hypothetical passionate man standard? Or the reasonable man standard? Do the reasonable thing and spare us from such an affront to our collective dignities. Support this resolution. Thank you.